The isolation of the islands caused these species to diversify, but it also creates very high risks for them. The arrival of new settlers adapted to the brutal natural competition on the continent may bring about dramatic changes within the fragile ecology of the Galapagos. These new introductions occurred on such a sporadic basis that they were absorbed over thousands of years. But the arrival of man changed the most important factor in this complex equation, time. Although it is likely that the Galapagos were visited by pre-Columbine sailors, it was officially discovered in 1535 by Fray Tomás de Berlanga. From then on, man started to interfere with the natural balance of the archipelago. New species arrived on his boats, deliberately or otherwise, and they arrived in numbers and varieties that could not be absorbed within the balance of nature of the islands. The new species were more aggressive and gradually started taking control of the niche dug out by the species native to the islands. And they are still doing it today. The blackberry, an aggressive bush that spreads very quickly, advances inexorably across the landscape in the islands where it has appeared. It is one of more than 300 species of exotic plants that have been introduced in the last decade a speed of invasion which the rhythm of evolutionary adaptions has found impossible to assimilate. The competition for the native plant's ecological niche is growing, although some of them have natural allies that enable them to spread widely far beyond the individual capacity of their fruit and seeds. This is the manzanillo. The sap from this tree is so poisonous that contact with it can produce very painful ulceration on the skin. Its fruits are also very poisonous for most animals, although not all. The so-called Galapagos, the giant turtles of the archipelago, eat the small fruits of the manzanillo without any trouble. Later, on their long pilgrimages through the island forests, they leave their compact deposits here and there. These turtles' digestive system is extremely rudimentary so that after one, two or even three weeks inside the animal, the manzanillo seeds reach the outside and colonize new lands which may be a long way from their original territory. The giant turtles of the Galapagos are very resistant to drought. Their metabolism allows them to obtain water from stores of fat and from the plants they eat on their slow journeys. But when there is water available, the big colonians gather on the shores every day and protect themselves from the sun and get rid of any parasites by taking baths and caking themselves in mud. This male, weighing over 200 kilos, cools off by staying still in the pond. It seems prepared to stay there until the sun and the heat go down, but things are going to take an unexpected turn. From the inside of the forest, a female on heat responds to the call of the fresh smell of the pond. The turtle has not spotted nor smelt the motionless male, but when she starts to drink, her stimulating smell reaches him and produces an immediate reaction in the enormous suitor. The turtles mate in a very impolite way. When the female discovers that a male is approaching, she does not waste a second and takes off as quickly as possible. The male is bigger and faster and generally catches up with the female. Later, he will block her path with his 230 kilos in weight and will carry out the copulation in an act which more resembles rape than mating.
In spite of its perfect adaptation to the environment and its great longevity, some turtles are said to be 200 years old, the giant Galapagos turtles have suffered an alarming decline in population levels. And their amazing capacity to withstand a lack of water and food is partly to blame. When ships started to arrive on the coasts of the Galapagos Islands, the sailors saw the giant turtles as a source of food on land and as a living food store for long voyages. One of these giants could go on for a year without eating or drinking, so they were perfect provisions for the sailors. In addition, the same ships whose crew members killed or made off with the turtles also brought invading animals with them that voluntarily or otherwise remained on the islands. Some of these, such as rats or pigs, have since then eaten the eggs of these giant kelonians. The result was that of the 14 races or subspecies which had been noted in the islands, only 10 have survived until today. Well, if you count Loni Jorge. Inside the Charles Darwin Biological Station on the island of Santa Cruz, the last member of the subspecies from Pinta, the most northerly island of the archipelago, awaits his sad fate with patience. Despite attempts to cross him with other similar subspecies, Jorge has rejected all the females. A reward of $10,000 has been offered for a Pinta female, but no zoo has been able to find one among its animals. In 1981, turtle excrement were found on Pinta, offering a ray of hope to this last example of a biological prototype that took millions of years to finish. Maybe Jorge has still got a chance to find a mate before he dies. The animals which were brought by sailors reproduced at ease and upset the ecological balance of the islands. One of the most widespread and most damaging was the goat. Abandoned on the island to reproduce and serve as future meat supplies, the goats prospered quickly and have become a plague. Today the same species that brought them in is trying to correct this mistake, and although the goat culling campaign is difficult, it is beginning to produce results. The controlled hunting of goats is permitted by the Galapagos National Park Services Department who enlist the services of hunters. The hunters use firearms or, as in this case, surround the goats near the coast and once they are tired, catch them and slaughter them. The youngest animals are sold as meat for human consumption and provide a source of income for the hunters and a source of protein for the islanders. But many old males are killed and abandoned so that the local buzzards may feed on their meat, so that in the end the goats do offer some benefits to the local fauna. The Galapagos Islands are a living, ever-changing system which is historically and geographically isolated and has only been joined to the rest of the world by man, the most aggressive species on the planet. From a strictly ecological point of view, we are just another species and our appearance in Galapagos and the avalanche of immediate consequences would therefore not be more important than other episodes in the long process of adaptations 
to new events that the islands have experienced since their origins. But our species is not just another of those that arrived and will continue to arrive at the Galapagos in a natural way. We are the most aggressive, but we also have the knowledge and the sensitivity that enables us to conserve this strange paradise where we can study the mechanisms of the origins of life and the development brought on by the struggle for survival, a complex and intricate game in which our species is also immersed. Now, all efforts are centered on a common aim, to conserve the isolation of the islands and their biological communities as far as is possible. Only in this way can the intricate mechanism of natural selection be studied. And only in this way will the prototypes be preserved, those endemic species that arose after thousands of years of adaptive pressure on the different habitats of the Galapagos Islands. It makes no difference if they are iguanas, land-based turtles, finches, or these larva gulls, of which only 400 pairs are left. All of them are fragile gears in the hermetic mechanism of the Galapagos. All of them are equally important, equally necessary. Darwin came here in search of the literal confirmation of the words of the book of Genesis. But Galapagos gave him their own answer. A view of life that would change our conception of the origin of species forever and which would make him right. Here, both in space and in time, we feel that we are closer to that great event, that mystery among mysteries, which is the appearance of new creatures on the earth.